But first, let me introduce my panel. On my far right is Otis Sanford, ABC 24's political analyst. Sam Hardiman is a reporter with the Daily Memphian. Antoine Stout Mitchell is a political consultant and former, former Memphis City Councilwoman. So we'll start with the mayor's race. You know, it seems to me a little odd that the top three candidates, arguably, certainly three front runners, have this residency issue coming up, but that's where we are, and that's why it's caused the controversy it has, and why there's this lawsuit. And so this week, uh, the city's uh, Jennifer Sink, the uh, city attorney, comes forward and says, we agree with what the city charter states, and that is that you have to have lived in the city for five years prior to the election. So Otis, how do you make, uh, what do you make of this, and what does it, effect does it have on the three candidates that are affected, and we have a graphic showing the three of them, uh, Willie Harrington, uh, Floyd Bonner, the sheriff, and uh, Van Turner, the former Shelby County Commissioner and head of the NAACP. Well, the first thing I make of it, it it's about time that we heard something from Jennifer Sink. Uh, I think she waited far too long. She should have said something about this early on. We've been dragging this out for, what, two months or so, maybe longer than that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't know uh, what the city's actual position is. Now we do. I think uh, Chancellor Joe Day Jenkins was warning to also hear from the city. Um, but I think it's going to be his decision. Uh, is the, are there some ambiguity in the, in the charter or, um, you know, I, I don't know the answer to that, but at least we have some clarity uh, from the city attorney and, you know, if the three top candidates uh, or the three front runners that you mentioned can't run, it throws the whole race into a topsy-turvy affair. But what's the likelihood of that, Sam? What do you think? Yeah, so first I want to say that two of the candidates, Sheriff Bonner and Mr. Turner, are definitely not residents of the city of Memphis of five years ago. Right. Former Mayor Willie Harrington, there's some ambiguity he there. He can play a claim. He, he has, he owned a home in Collierville, but he filed his campaign finance documents in 2019 when he lost to Mayor Strickland from his mo mother's former home on Barton Street in South Memphis. And so, in general, you know, he called me this week and he, he actually said, go look at my utility bills, see where I was living. Mm -hmm. Because that's, <laughs> you know, he can definitely make a claim that, that mm -hmm. he lived in Memphis and was a five-year resident. So, uh, we are gearing up to this May 18th uh, uh, court date, I guess, and uh, again, Sam, I know you're following this closely. What are we expecting to happen there? Will we actually have a decision that day, or? I mean, it, it, it would be unlikely, I think, that Chancellor Jenkins would rule from the bench that day. I mean, I'm just guessing here. I think they're gonna have a lot of pleadings in front of them. All the parties at this point, which are many, and there may be more by the time this airs. Um, are filing, you know, rapid fire motions, and so this could shake out a little bit before then. But I'd imagine that if we get to the 18th, and this is unresolved, Jenkins is going to listen to arguments, and then he's going to take maybe a couple of days, maybe a couple of hours, and rule. He has ruled from the bench throughout the case. I just don't see a scenario where these three candidates aren't allowed to be on the ballot. If they pull their petition four days after that court hearing on the 22nd and they get the signatures they're required, I just don't see how you deny them a chance to run and leave it up to the court of public opinion to decide whether it's relevant or important enough that uh, a candidate did or didn't live in the city five years prior to the election. What do you think? I think you're right. I think the judge is in a precarious position, but really it's not... Um that hard because we have allowed Dr. Harrington to run before mm -hmm. in an election and we have uh, allowed someone else, another candidate who was fairly new to Memphis. Memphis was a home, she was away, she came back, she ran for mayor and she ran. So I don't see that happening and what is at question here is the 1996 referendum and if the referendum was really speaking to uh, super districts and this got trinkled in there about the residency, does that void super districts? I, I, think, <laughs> oh I think you open up a can of worms <laughs> and I would be surprised if the council did not weigh in on this issue since they are our legislative body. And they should stand behind the referendum that the council uh, put forth or say we don't stand behind the referendum and we do think there's a five-year residency or we stand behind the referendum and there is no residency requirement at this point, but we want to fix it 
And so we are offering a new referendum. And right. by passing the new referendum, I think that tells you what they think. Yeah. Well, I had the quip about uh, we know one of the candidates uh, isn't taking any showers. Uh, at, the, oh my gosh. At, the, at the residence uh, that he claims in Binghamton. You know what I'm talking about, Sam, because this was your story. You actually looked at the utility bills of uh, Van Turner, who uh, has a home in Binghamton. That is true, but uh, there's some questions as to whether he's actually living there. Yeah, at the, at the time, which I believe I have utility bills through the end of um, March, uh, the water meter on his home, since the bill had been put in his name late in, I believe, in November of 2022, the reading on that water meter hasn't changed which means water has not come out of the faucet. And so, you know, he, Mr. Turner has said to the Daily Memphian, he is living at the home, it's in the midst of renovations, he's not there every night. Okay, uh, I've asked to see a tour when the renovations are done. We will uh, look to see if there are some building permits filed as the months go by. Okay, but if there are renovations going on, reasonable to assume that the Southeast Shelby County residence is where the f he and the family are spending their nights. I don't know. Right? Okay. It's, yeah. Well, so how big of a deal do you think this is, Otis? I mean, when it comes to voters, I guess they ultimately have the final choice. Oh, I think it's a big deal. I mean, I hear a lot, uh, both on social media and uh, person to person, people saying, if you didn't take the time to live here, why do you want to leave the city? Uh, and that resonates, I believe, with a lot of people. So, yeah, I mean, they, they may be allowed to run. Um, but I think that the other candidates, uh, uh, Michelle McKissick is already making this a big issue with her campaign to say I'm a lifelong Memphian uh, and, and is making that point uh, that these people have not chosen to live in Memphis but now they want to run Memphis. I think the voters will take that into account whether it tips the uh, decision, the final decision or not, I don't know. But I think voters will take it into it. Yeah, in fact, three uh, candidates come to mind. Uh, Paul Young, J.W. Gibson, and Michelle McKissick, who Otis mentioned, have all come out with a statement publicly, one way or the other, uh, saying, what's wrong with these candidates? They haven't lived in the city where they want to be mayor. Do you think that's smart politics to want? You know, I don't think it's smart politics, but I, un I understand it's, it's really why we probably need a metropolitan form of government. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, now we, we can't go down that road. <laughs> you don't get to go down because that road. Because our sure lines don't. are so blurred <laughs> that you can be outside of Memphis but still feel connected to Memphis. Now, that's just the truth. But uh, my, this is my husband's pet peeve. Um, if you want to serve in a district, you need to live and represent the people of that district. And that's a basic um, philosophical principle for democratic leadership. I'm glad to say some candidates legitimately have bought, purchased homes and that's good for Memphis and to become a part of Memphis. And we'll see how this shakes out because I just have no clue of what's going to happen, but I know if the judge throws this out, it opens up another whole can of worms or questions. And so to that point, if, if I may chime in on this, on whether or not this is going to matter with voters, I think it matters with people who are paying attention and reading That's the news. True. How many people, when they plug into this race, whether it's June, whether it's August, whether it's a couple days before early voting, and everyone's on the ballot, and they're handed one of those, you know, pay-to-play paper ballots that get handed out at polls, mm -hmm. and it's got somebody's name on it, are they really going to think, oh, this, this person didn't live in the city of Memphis? And also, it, it depends on the money that's behind the message, too. Is a candidate going to spend money and put that on TV? Or is it going to be money from, you know, say, Sheriff Bonner's campaign that is just reminding Memphians crime, 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 and that's, you know, the difference here. There are yeah. three issues that's driving Memphis right now. Uh, crime, uh, education, po poverty, and I add a fourth one, uh, on the economy, a fourth one. And the candidate who can speak best to how they're going to um, make some meaningful um, changes and with some good strategies to that, 
I don't care where he's from or she's from. You notice we've been talking Keep about that. I'll let you have the final word on this. Yeah. But right now, I don't know if we're really hearing that kind of vision being articulated by any of the candidates. No, we're not right then, right now. I mean, that last debate, uh, the Daily Memphian debate, it was all about crime. Um, I think one of the criticisms that that got was it was much too generalizations, uh, too many generalizations going on in their responses. Um, so they're going to have to sharpen their message. Uh, Tawana is right. The one who can speak and articulate best what your vision is, where Memphis should go. This is a crucial election. I've been saying that for a long time. Uh, and the one who can best articulate that will be the one that I think voters will give some. Attention. Well, as Twan mentioned, crime is definitely going to be one of those issues, if not the number one issue with voters. And we're going to talk about an extension of that when we talk about guns coming up in the next segment here. Uh, city councilman wanting to uh, have city, the city of Memphis kind of take uh, this issue by the reins and, and bypass the state altogether. Will that work? We'll talk about it right after this.